FM. News. Clear, concise and informative. Thank you for joining us on the News Machine, the hottest news magazine show on radio. We are reaching you from Hot FM stations in Lagos on 93.3 FM, Hot FM Abuja 98.3 FM and Hot FM Mwari 99.5 FM. 7 a.m. to 7.15 a.m. Monday to Friday. I am Otobong Nkanta. This morning on the News Machine, court orders PSC to pay retired AIG Mbu 40 million naira general damages. IPOP dismisses rumored one week sit at home in Southeast. And Tinubu ready to lead Africa, says Dele Alake. We will also be linking up for the voices in the news. The news machine will be back after these message. Now you can get your news on. Hot, fresh, exciting and exclusive. The news machine. Reaching you at the same time in Lagos, Abuja and Nwari. Three stay for the price of one. Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7.15 a.m. The news machine. More than just news. Hot FM. We are more than just radio. Welcome back to the News Machine. The National Industrial Court has ordered the Police Service Commission to pay retired Assistant Inspector General of Police Joseph Mbu the sum of 40 million naira as general damages. The payment, as ordered by Justice Osato Gunwem Obasiki Osage, was for the unlawful retirement of Mbu before he attained the mandatory age of 60 years. The court, in addition, set aside the purported retirement and declared that the claimant remained an officer of the Nigeria Police Force until he attained the mandatory retirement age of 60 on May 10, 2018. Furthermore, the court ordered the defendant to pay Mbu his salaries, allowances and entitlements from July 2, 2016 when he was retired until May 10, 2018 when he ought to have retired having attained 60 years. The judge, while delivering the judgment, ordered that the sum of 750,000 naira be paid to the claimant as the cost of the suit, stating that failure of the defendants to comply with the orders of the court within 30 days will attract a 10% interest per annum. The indigenous people of Biafra has once again refuted the claim that it declared a one-week sit-at-home exercise across the southeast region. The pro-Biafran group said the clarification became necessary because of the tension and panic the rumors have generated. The rumor of a one-week sit-at-home starting from June 3 to June 9, purportedly declared by Simon Ekpa's faction of the IPOB group, has been making the rounds across the region for some days now. Reacting to the development in a statement on Monday, the IPOP spokesman Emma Powerful said Southeast residents should ignore the rebel rousers, insisting there is no such thing as sit at home. The group noted that those piloting IPOP affairs are intellectuals who know when to apply different strategies and cannot indulge in activities that will impact negatively on the people. President Bola Tinubu recognizes that Nigeria is being looked upon for leadership and he is prepared to step up to the challenge. Dele Alake, the special advisor to the president, special duties, communications and strategy met this known to State House correspondent following the visit of President Omaru Sisoko Mbalo of the Republic of Guinea-Bissau to President Tinubu at his Ikoi, Lagos residence. Alake told reporters that while the visit was of a private nature, President Mbalo took the opportunity to express his solidarity and willingness to cooperate with Nigeria under the leadership of President Tinubu. He also highlighted that the visit allowed Mbalo, who is currently the chairman of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, to reinforce the fraternal relations between the two countries. What it was, the president of Guinea-Bissau came to visit the president of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, but it was strictly a private visit. It wasn't anything official at all. It was a private visit and we had to be on hand to receive him and our president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, received him very warmly and uh, the president of Guinea-Bissau himself exuded some enthusiasm and warmth which is uncharacteristic, you know, uh, untypical of what we saw in the past. 
you know, he was very forthcoming, he was very expressive, he expressed his solidarity with the president of Nigeria and his readiness to cooperate with Nigeria at all times and with our current president. And he commended the, the laudable and, uh, you know, policy initiatives of uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in the la last one month. And he said that everybody in the, in the world, in the international community, have been... Uh, you know, uh, commending his giant strides. So he came to pay his solidarity and, 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 and to pay courtesy call, as it were, and to, you know, uh, bond with him as a brother African head of state in the first instance, and in particular as a brother West African ECOWAS head of state. On the entourage of the visiting Bissau Guinean leader were his special advisor, Karamo Kamara, Chief of Staff, Khalifa Soares, and Diplomatic Advisor, Ambassador Alfredo Cabral, and Image Operator Bonifacio Correa. The absence of Chief Magistrate Adiola Olatumbosun of the Yaba Magistrate Court has told the trial of Afrobeat musician Sherun Kuti. The registrar, Mr. Babalola, in the absence of the Chief Magistrate, adjourned the case till September 27, 2023 for the continuation of the proceeding. Magistrate Olatumbosun was said to have resumed her administrative leave and was thus absent in court on Monday. Recall the Lagos State Police Command arraigned the Afrobeat musician on May 16, 2023. Sharon was charged with assault on a police officer and offence contrary to Section 356 of the Nigerian Criminal Code Act. Now it's time to get the trendy stories from the news machine studios at Hot FM 98.3 Abuja. Let's hook up with more news coming from the nation's capital. Good morning, I'm Tonya Kokodia. Proceedings at the PEPT continued today after the court was adjourned from Monday. Independent National Electoral Commission on Monday in Abuja began its defense of the February 25th presidential election on a shaky note with none of its three witnesses present at the presidential election petition. Contrary to the scheduled activities of the court, INEC, which conducted the disputed election and billed to open defense, came to the court without any witness. Its lead counsel and former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Abu Bakar Balarabi Mahmoud, informed the court of his plan to call three witnesses to counter the allegations of the Labour Party and its presidential candidate, Peter Gregory Obi. He, however, lamented that none of the witnesses was in court due to domestic reasons for him to open the defense heading that the senior lawyer pleaded with the court to bear with him and uh, applied for adjournment of his defense. However, lead counsel to OB D. Livy Uzoku expressed shock and surprise with the conduct of the electoral body, telling the court that the INEC lawyer ought to have taken him into confidence before the commencement of the proceedings. And our FCT administration has decried the repeated vandalism and theft of expensive gully inlets, manhole covers and other flood containment infrastructure on Abuja city roads. FCT Permanent Secretary Olusa de Adesola, who made this known after a flood assessment tour of parts of the city over the weekend, lamented that the expansive gully inlet and manhole covers that were recently replaced by the FCTA have been vandalized and stolen, leading to the suboptimal performance of the drainage systems and consequent flooding on some city roads. While expressing shock at the gully inlet and manhole covers made of ductile materials have also been Targeted by the vandals, Olusade urged FCT residents and security agencies to collaborate with the FCT administration to ensure that prompt action is taken to arrest and prosecute the offenders. On this particular road that we are, ductile materials that was thought to be of little or no second-hand value were installed, but shockingly today, all of them had been removed and nobody had been arrested for removing any. We want to beckon on every citizen and our law enforcement agencies to support the effort of FCT in protecting lives and properties through the provision of road infrastructure. Adisola, who complained that the sewer hole designed to allow for free flow of water through the channel, provided underground or now used as a dumping waste, warned residents to desist from it. To members of the public, they need to know that these uh, gully inlets are not dump sites. They are to allow free flow of water through the channels or ducts provided underground. When these uh, ducts are working, uh, when free flow of water occurs there, immediately after it rains, five minutes the place is dry. But when they are blocked, the water accumulates. The consequences are grievous than we thought. For instance, they soak the road, damage the road, and create problems for all of us. 
The Permanent Secretary was accompanied on the visit by senior officials of the relevant secretariat's departments and agencies of the FCTA. Another United Nations Children's Fund says that Nigeria has the highest rate of open defecation in the world. UNICEF Chief of Water, Sanitation and Hygiene Jane Bevan made the disclosure during a two-day media dialogue on open defecation organized by UNICEF in collaboration with the Child Rights Information Bureau of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture in Biu, Borno State. Represented by UNICEF Nigeria WASH Specialist Chisoma Dimora, she said Nigeria has been amongst the top five open defecators in the world for the past 15 years, moving from fifth place in 2003 to second place in 2015 and now first place in 2023 with the eradication of open defecation in India in 2019. She added that only 102 of 774 local government areas representing 13% are certified open defecation free in the country, adding that the 24 states and the federal capital territory had no ODF validated local government area. And that's all from the News Machine Studio at Hot FM Abuja. Over to Lagos. All right, let's link up with the news machine studios at Hot FM 99.5 Oweri for the training news happening in the southeastern part of the country. Good morning and welcome to our news machine studios in Oweri, the Imo State capital. The Imo State government had revealed that opposition parties must pay the sum of 54 million naira to obtain permission to erect campaign structures for the upcoming governorship election in the state. In the documents that purportedly emanated from the Emo Signage and Advertisement Agency and signed by its general manager, political parties are instructed to seek a permit with the sum of 54 million naira before mounting campaign structures including billboards, posters and other means. The chairman of the opposition parties consisting of the Accord Party, the PDP, the Labour Party, APGA, Action Alliance, ADC, NNPP, SDP, YPP, ADC and APP made this known through their spokesman, Chief Uchendu Ahaneku, when they addressed newsmen in Oweri, the Imo state capital. They operate under the ages of the Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC G12 Imo state, comprising 12 political parties in the state. Describing the fee as outrageous, the chairman also alleged that the move represents an attempt by the state government to stifle opposition and ensure that only the ruling All Progressives Congress APC was given a space to breathe in the state. Abia State House of Assembly has constituted a seven-member committee for the screening of the 19 commissioner nominees submitted by Governor Alex Oti. The Speaker, Emmanuel Emerua, speaking after reading out the names of the nominees, appealed to members of the committee to expedite action on the assignment. He told the committee, headed by Chinasa Anthony of Umahe Central, that this had become necessary to enable Oti move in full swing to deliver his campaign promises. And finally, the Anambra state government has set up a panel of inquiry into the controversy trailing the highest scorer in the 2023 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME. The State Commissioner for Education, Professor Ngozi Chumude, announced the setting up of the panel in a statement in Oka on Monday. The commissioner described the controversy on the girl's actual result as embarrassing, especially coming at a time Governor Chuku Masuludo was repositioning the education sector in Anambra. Ejikeme, a student of Anglican Girls Secondary School, Uragu in Nnewi, had earlier been celebrated for emerging with the highest score of 362 in the 2023 UTME, a result described by Jamb as fake. The Joint Admissions and Matriculations Board, JAMB, said in a statement on Sunday that Ejikeme inflated her actual result from 249 to 362. Meanwhile, the state government has recognized Nkechinere Ume, who was declared by JAMB as the highest scorer nationwide with a cumulative mark of 360 in the 2023 UTME. That's all from the News Mission Studios at Hot FM Oweri. Back to our studios in Lagos. I am Ife Yungwa Nwana. 
You are listening to the news machine reaching you from our stations in Lagos, Abuja and Oweri, 7 a.m. to 7.15 a.m. Monday to Friday. Let's hear what correspondent Nessasani has for us on Voices in the News. Niger Delta activist Asari Dokubo talking about Namdi Kanu. You encourage people to kill other people. When the madness they call NSA started, I was one of the people vocal opposed to that nonsense called Edsas. And Inamdikanu was walking free. What did he do? He poured petrol. He was walking free. He poured petrol on the flames for Edsas. Now, he has been caught. What of the people who have died? This is a criminal. He should face the law. What of the people who have died by, as I'm talking, Inam Dikano does not have any control over the, what is happening in the Southeast. Simeon Epa had come out pretending that he's with Inam Dikano. He has actually plotted a coup against Inam Dikano to take over the leadership of IPO. That is the truth of the matter. So releasing in the Kano is rewarding criminality and rewarding gruesome murder of innocent people. He should face the law for the actions and the instigation he has carried out. And that's all we have for you in today's package of the news machine. Thank you for listening and to have a lovely day ahead. Good morning.